Hi, Tom Hugart here, and I am super excited to be able to tell you that on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of April, I am bringing together some of the greatest names in price action to teach in London. I have persuaded Al Brooks to fly in from California to give several lectures on price action. I have persuaded Larry Pesavento to fly in from Arizona and give talks about price action. I have persuaded Dr. David Paul to fly in from Johannesburg to give a talk about price action. And I have persuaded Steve Ward to drive in from his uh, local area in the UK to give a talk about trading psychology. And myself, I'm going to be trading live on Friday. So if you want to have a free day event or maybe just the Saturday and the Sunday to watch live trading and hot topics and talks about price action, then follow this guidance here. Go to my website and under resources, scroll down and click on London Price Action Symposium. Click on find out more and click on read more. And in there, you'll get a full detail of what the three days entail. Now, as I said, I'll be trading live on the Friday from uh, 12 o'clock noon London time till about 6, 7 o'clock. And it's going to be a super exciting day because it's Friday. It's the first day of the month. It means non-farm payroll. And with everything else that's going on geopolitically, I promise you that I'm going to have my work cut out for me. And assisting me on stage is going to be Larry Pesavento. On the Saturday, Al Brooks is going to take the stage several times and he's going to do the same on the Sunday. And he's going to be assisted by uh, Dr. David Paul as well as Steve Ward. And Larry Pesavento will also be talking on the Saturday and the Sunday. You can sign up to the event by going to Trader Tom and scroll all the way down to the end. You will be able to choose from several kind of packages. There's the Friday, Saturday, Sunday package. There's also the Friday, Saturday, Sunday package where you get Al Brooks's free books included in the price. But that's not really what this video is about. See, what this video is about is me introducing a teaser web seminar that Al Brooks has recorded. And I'm super excited to tell you that Al Brooks is going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is scalping on stock indices. Al Brooks has recorded a 36 minute price action trading scalping web seminar on how to enter on scalps. I hope you enjoy it and I hope to see you in London. You take care now. Hi everyone, I'm Al Brooks and I wanna thank you for watching this webinar today. I wanna to thank Tom Hugard for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Additionally, I wanna say that you're very fortunate to have Tom. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He understands trading very well. And he's also very honest, and it's hard to find that combination. Today, I'm going to be talking about scalping and how to enter. I'm going to begin by talking about stop orders and limit orders and why I think they are opposite bets. Then I'll talk about scalping within a trading range. I'll move on to talking about why beginners lose when they trade with limit orders. Next, I'm going to be talking about scalping and strong trends. And finally, I'll talk about what everybody should be doing, and that is patiently waiting for trends. I said that a stop order is the opposite of a limit order, and I'm going to explain why I say that. A bull buys with a stop above the high of a bar, betting on a trend. So he'll buy above the high of that bar betting on a trend. He'll place an order to buy one tick, or if it's a Forex market, one pip above the high of the prior bar. This bar has a high below that bar, so it's a pullback. He's buying as the market goes above the high of this bar. So the market's breaking out above this bar. He's hoping the breakout will continue into a trend. A stop order is a bet on a trend. You're hoping that the market will continue up far enough so that you can take a profit. For example, if you buy here, you might take profits here if you're a scalper.
When the market's trending, there'll be many more profitable stop order trades and fewer profitable limit order trades. Every trade requires someone doing the opposite of what you're doing. When a bull buys with a stop order, someone else sells, and they're selling either with a limit order or a market order. You should think of stop and limit orders as opposite bets. At the high of a bar, bulls buy with a stop just above the high of the bar, and a bear sells with a limit order at the high of the prior bar, betting that if the market goes above that bar, the breakout will fail and the market will reverse down. A bear will often use a limit order to sell at the high of the prior bar. He's betting that if the market goes above the high of the bar, instead of continuing up, the breakout will fail and it will reverse down. A limit order trader is betting on a reversal. The market's going up, he's selling, betting that it will not go up very far before it goes down far enough for him to make a profit. A lot of limit order scalpers are willing to scale in, sell more if the market goes against them. So if this bear sold at this high, he might sell more at the distance of a scalp. So for example, if this were the E-mini, he might be scalping for one point. He's selling here, hoping it falls one point and he can make a profit. If he's looking to scale in, he might sell more one point higher and maybe more one point above that. Remember, a limit order is betting against a trend. The market is going up and you're selling betting that it'll go down far enough for you to make some profit. For example, a bear scalper selling here might take profits here. So he sold here, betting the breakout would fail, and then he takes his profit. I said that when the market is trending, there will be far more good profitable stop order trades than limit order trades. People betting on trends are going to make money. Trading with stops is a bet on a trend. When the market's in a trading range, there'll be far fewer profitable stop order trades and far more profitable limit order trades. Because in a trading range, you're getting a lot of reversals and a limit order trade is a bet on a reversal. Remember, I said that every trade requires someone doing the opposite. When a bear sells with a limit order, someone else is buying, either with a stop order or with a market order. At the high of the bar where the bear is selling, a bull is buying, betting on a trend up. A bear looking to sell with a stop order is going to enter on a stop one tick below the low of the prior bar, or one pip in a forex market. This low is above that low, so this is a pullback, and bears will short one tick or one pip below the low of that bar. And he's hoping the market's going to fall far enough for him to scalp, and then he'll take his profit at whatever predetermined profit target he wanted. A bull scalper looking to enter with a limit order will buy at the low of the prior bar, betting that the breakout below the bar will not go very far and that the breakout will fail and the market will reverse. So the bull will buy at the low of that bar, betting that the market will go up and he can make a profitable scalp. For example, he might exit right there. I want to talk a little bit about scalping in a trading range. Obviously a trading range, lots of sideways bars, four sideways bars here, lots of reversals, down, up, down, up, lots of prominent tails. All of those things happen in trading ranges. The more of that that you see, especially early in the day, if you see a lot of bars with big tails, a lot of 
bars sideways, three here, four or five here, and a lot of alternating and an absence of consecutive big bull bars or consecutive big bear bars, the market's probably in a trading range. Now, I want to keep coming back to a certain point. If you want to make a living as a trader, you have a much better chance of doing it if you swing trade and enter with stop orders. And some days, unfortunately, are mostly sideways. You'll be disappointed after you enter. You'll buy hoping for a trend up. It doesn't go very far. You'll sell hoping for a trend down. It doesn't go very far. And you'll end up scalping out. If you're taking entries in a trading range, you should be scalping because you're not going to get much of a trend and the market's constantly going to reverse. And if you hold, the market will come back to your entry price and you'll have given back all of your profit. So if you're going to trade in a trading range day, there'll be an occasional swing trade, but most of what you'll be doing is scalping, taking quick profits instead of holding for trends because most of the trades won't go far enough for you to, to make a swing profit. Again, sideways bars here. These four bars are overlapping one another. Here we have five or six bars overlapping one another. We have a lot of small bodies, a lot of big tails. A tail means the market went up and went down. It went down, it went up. Trading range trading, reversals. The more of that you see, the more likely the day is going to be a trading range day. Think opposite. When things look bullish, it's time to sell. When things look bearish, it's time to buy. Here, very bearish, didn't go down very much. Traders who bought down here made money. Here, very bullish. Traders who bought lost money. Traders who sold made money. Very bullish breakout. You make more money selling that close than buying it. You got to be thinking opposite. When you're trading in a trading range, you're looking to buy a reversal up in the bottom third, especially if there's a second signal. Here's a first reversal and here's a second signal. You buy on a stop one tick above a bar closing near its high. That's what a stop entry trader will do in a trading range day. And bears will do the opposite. They're looking to sell a reversal down in the upper third of the range, preferably below a bar closing near its low. And a second consecutive signal is a higher probability trade. First reversal second signal here and they're taking quick profits remember in a trading range things look most bullish or most bearish when it's about to reverse and therefore traders will look to buy the close of big bear bars near the bottom of the range and sell the close of a big bull bar near the top of the range these are limit order traders, traders looking to enter with limit orders. A big bear bar near the low, you buy, you buy, you buy, you buy. And you keep doing that all day and you're taking quick profits. You're looking for scalps. If there's a big bull bar, you're more likely going to make money if you sell, especially if you can use a wide stop and scale in. So every big bull bar in the top half or top third of the range, Traders will sell, they'll use wide stops, and they'll scale in, and they'll exit with the scalp, a quick profit. Limit order traders will also buy below a prior low. They'll have a limit order to buy below that low, below this low, below that low, and they'll look to sell above a prior high. They'll place a limit order to sell at this high and sell more higher. At this high, sell more higher. Every prior low, they look to buy, and they're looking for scalps. And they'll sell at a prior high. They'll have a limit order at this high. They'll get filled here, looking for a scalp. And they do that all day long. Lots of opportunities to buy at prior lows and sell at prior highs. Exit with a scalp, a small profit. If you put it all together, there are a lot of opportunities to buy. You buy at a prior low, 
you buy a reversal up from the bottom third, you sell at a prior high, you sell a reversal down from the prior third, you buy bear closes near the bottom, you sell bull closes near the top. Lots and lots of opportunities to make money. So what's the catch? If there are so many opportunities to make money, why am I warning about trading in a trading range? If you're a very good experienced trader, you can do it and make a lot of money. I personally don't find it fun. I do it, but I don't find it fun. And when you're a trader, there are two things you should always be aware of. You should always be thinking about two things. You have to be trying to make money. You're doing this for a living and you have to be having fun. There are many different ways to make money as a trader that are not fun. And if you're not having fun, don't do them. Use the ways that you enjoy doing. Some people like limit order trades. Some people like scalping. Some people like swing trades. If you're profitable and you're happy, you know, what else can you ask for? Whatever suits your personality, if it's profitable, go for it. Most traders will make more money looking for trend days and swing trading and entering on stops. Now, I said there are a lot of signals here. And why is it difficult to make money? Because of the trader's equation. Trader's equation means the percentage of the time that you win times your average size of a win must be greater than the percentage of the time that you lose times the average size of your loss. A scalp means you're going for a small reward relative to risk. So you have bad risk reward. And in a trading range, the probability is never as high as you want. Things are never as clear as you want. You're buying when it looks bearish and you're selling when it looks bullish. So you have bad risk reward and the probability is not especially high. And that combination makes it difficult to make money unless you're an experienced scalper who can scale in and not panic and not do the wrong thing. What happens with beginners is they tend to sell out of longs at a time when they should be buying more. They tend to buy back shorts when they should be selling more. And because they're not doing the right thing, they end up losing money. Scalpers, they can improve their trader's equation by increasing their probability. They know what their risk is. They know where they put their stops. They know what their reward is. They're going for a scalp and they know how big it is. And they can improve their probability if they use wide stops and scale in. And that can make it a profitable strategy, scalping in a trading range. You can increase your probability high enough so that it overcomes the bad risk reward. I said scalpers often use wide stops. So for example, if a bull bought that bear close, or if he bought above this bull bar, instead of exiting below a bull bar, he might use a wide stop, maybe a measured move down based upon the height of this trading range. And the opposite's true here. If he sells that close or sells below that bar, instead of exiting just a little bit above, he might use a wide stop, maybe based upon the height of this buy climax bar, and then look to add on higher. Now, we have a big bear bar closing on its low. If we had consecutive big bear bars closing near their lows, it's probably worthwhile exiting before your stop is hit. Not necessarily, though. Some scalpers will use very wide stops and scale in, knowing that even if you have a big breakout in a trading range day, if you manage it correctly, you can usually still make money. In general, it's better if you have a breakout with consecutive closes below get out of longs. If you have a breakout with consecutive big bull bars closing above, get out of shorts. Why do beginners lose with limit orders? Well, let's talk about it. We have a big move up, a big move down, and now another big move up. Big up, big down creates big confusion. Confusion is a hallmark of a trading range. 
So when you see that, you got to be thinking that we're probably entering a trading range, even though we have several very big trend bars, bull and bear trend bars. Scaling in and scalping, you have a very high probability of winning. A good scalper can win 80 or 90% of the time. And the problem for the beginner is that there's occasionally going to be a very big move against your position and you will exit at a time when you should be adding on. And the result is one big loss can erase a whole bunch of winners and you end up losing money. Once you suspect that the market might be in a trading range, you'll start to scalp if you're going to trade. A lot of the scalpers will be limit order scalpers. They'll look to sell with limit orders. For example, anytime they see a high, they might place a limit order to sell at that high, get filled here, and then exit with a scalp down here. If this is the E-mini, and the range is small, the bars are small, they might be scalping for one point. If the bars are bigger, if the day's ranges have been big, they might scalp for two points, four points, 10 points, depending on the size of the bars. He'll place a limit order to buy at a prior low. He'll buy here. He'll buy more lower, get filled here. Might buy more, two points down, three points down. He can get out break even here when it gets back to his first trade. He gets out break even on the first buy and with a profit on his second buy. And he can keep doing it all day long. As long as he thinks the market's in a trading range market, he can sell at a prior high, sell there, sell more higher, sell here, sell more higher, get out break even on the first sell and with a profit on the second sell and just keep doing it all day long. Buy at a prior low, buy more lower, buy more lower still. But look what's different here. We have a bull channel. We have a trading range here. We have a bear bar closing near its low. We have a second bear bar closing near its low, breaking below the lows of this trading range and this bull channel. Remember what I said earlier, if you start to get a pair of decent sized bear bars closing on or near their lows, breaking below something, breaking out of something, it's usually better just to exit. An experienced scalper comfortable using wide stops will continue to add on. You might take one limit order trade here, one limit order trade here, and then stop and look for a stop order trade down here. pair of consecutive big bear bars closing on their lows, closing below the moving average. These bars look different from all of these bars. These bars have small bodies and prominent tails. And here we have two consecutive good sized bear bodies with very small tails and closing on or near their lows. The character of the market is changing from a trading range type of environment into possibly a trend. Most traders should get out once they see that. If they're a long scalper, if you bought here, bought here, and bought a third time here, it's better just to get out here. But some traders will just use a wide stop after a second or third entry, and then wait and buy above a bull bar, betting that the market will come up high enough for them to avoid a loss. For example, you buy here, you buy here, you buy here. You might exit here, but an experienced trader might double his position as soon as he sees the bull bar closing near its high. If he bought one contract and then a second and then a third, an experienced scalper might double that and trade six. Though he was trading one contract all day long, sometimes two, now he's trading six. And that is the problem with limit order scalping, a beginner is never going to be able to do that. If he's comfortable trading one or two contracts, he's probably not going to be comfortable trading six. To trade it correctly or optimally, that's what he has to do. 
what instead he'll do is he'll panic out there or here with a very big loss when instead you should be looking to buy. So big bear breakout, if you did buy, it was reasonable to buy that and this and that. That was all reasonable because it was trading range trading. But after you have these two big bear bars, it's no longer a trading range trade. It's now a trend. But it's still possibly simply a test of the low of the trading range. And therefore, a trader comfortable with a very wide stop can hold long and double his position size. If he only bought one here and did not add on here, doubling his position size here would be buying two. If he bought here and here, but not here, so he's long two contracts, doubling his position size would be four. So if you're going to sit through a big bear breakout and wait for a reversal, I personally like to double my position size there. A beginner who thought he was trading small enough suddenly discovers he's trading too big. And that's the problem that beginners have with limit order scalping and scaling in. They can win all day long and then something like this happens and it's different from what they've been doing all day long. They mess it up and they lose a lot of money. The bull who bought here, bought here, bought here, and then doubled his position size here. He had to incur a lot of risk, but he got paid for that risk. He got out break even on his first buy, a profit on this buy, a profit on this buy, and he bought three contracts here and he had a big profit. And that offsets the big risk that he was taking. The fundamental problem with a beginner is he thinks he's trading small enough to handle a big move against his position. You'll sometimes get a move that makes it clear that he's still trading too big and that occasional big loss wipes out all of his earlier gains. You have to trade the I don't care size until you can handle the occasional big bad surprise. By the I don't care size, it's a size that's so small that you don't care if the market goes against you. You can just keep adding on appropriately without worrying about losing too much money. The goal at that point of your career is not to get rich. Your goal at that point in your career is simply to develop trading skills. You're trying to get good. You're not going to make a lot of money, but if you trade well, you'll consistently make money. And at some point, a year, six months, two years, your account will be big enough so that you can trade a bigger position and then start thinking about making a lot of money. But initially, when you're starting out, your goal is to not get rich. Your goal is to stop losing and then trading consistently, profitably, and making a little bit of money consistently, and then trying to grow your account. Those are the initial goals as a trader. Now, scalping and trends. Some traders can do it. Obviously, a very strong bull trend. You only want to buy. It's a small pullback bull trend. There are pullbacks, but they're all small. One or two bars, they don't fall very far. When you see that, it's very difficult for a bear to make money. If a bear sold at the high of this bar, the pullback never went below that high. So if he sold at that high, got filled here, sold more, he tried to get out break even. It never got here. He had to cover with a loss. And there are many gaps all day long. So bears selling at prior highs kept losing money. Limit order bears are not making money. And if limit order bears are not making money, stop order bears are not making money. So bears are not making money. If it's really hard for a bear to make money, the market has to go higher to find a price where bears will sell. All day today, the market never found that price. You only should be looking to buy. If it's very difficult for a bear to make money, only look to buy and do it all day long. And you can buy for any reason. You can buy above the high of a bull bar here. You can buy above that bar, above this bar, all day long. You can buy a bull close. Anytime you see a bar closing near its high, you just buy the market as soon as the bar closes. You can do that all day long. You can buy bear closes because the bears are not going to be making money and every attempt to reverse down is going to fail. So a bear bar, 
you buy it. Bear bar, when it closes, you just buy the market. You can buy when the market finally pulls back to the 20 bar exponential moving average because the first time it pulls back, traders will buy it expecting a new high. And you can buy the moving average all day as long as the trend is strong. You can buy below the low of the prior bar, especially if it's a bull bar or a doji bar. A bull bar here, you place a limit order to buy at its low. A doji bar here, not a strong sell signal bar, you place a limit order to buy at its low, and you can buy more lower. Bull trends are constantly forming wedge tops. Here's a small wedge, here's a wedge. All day long, they form wedge tops. But the wedge tops are going to fail and lead to bull flags. The reversals will be bull flags. The pullbacks will be brief and not fall very far. So if you're shorting, which you should not do on a day like this, you're scalping. You should not be shorting on a day like this. When it's very difficult to make money selling, you should be buying. And you have to get long. Even if you have to trade a very tiny position, you have to get long. Now, it looks like you can buy, scalp, buy, scalp, buy, scalp, buy, scalp, and do it 20 or 30 times all day long. But most traders should not trade that way because what will happen is they'll do it once or twice and then they'll never get back in. They'll constantly be thinking the market's too overbought, it's starting to form too many wedges, it has to pull back. It never pulls back far enough so that you feel the risk is small enough to buy. And the result is you buy, you buy and you scalp out, or you buy, you scalp out, do it two or three times, and then you never get back in and you miss a huge trend day. If you find that you're doing that, don't scalp out. Just buy and hold and wait until the trade is no longer valid. Today, it was valid all day long. There's really no need to get out of a long. It doesn't matter which of the buys you took, you just buy hold. You can get out a point or two below the low of the prior bar. You can get out below a big bear bar closing near its low and just buy again above a bull bar closing near its high. Most traders should just buy, use a wide stop and hold and let the trend go on until it's no longer a trend. And today it was a trend all day. Same thing with the bear trend. If it's really difficult for bulls to make money, if there are a lot of gaps and body gaps, pullbacks are small, the bounces are really small, don't buy, only sell. A trend like this, it's a breakout on a higher time frame chart, a micro channel, every high at or below the high of the prior bar. So a very strong trend. You certainly would not be looking to buy anything that looks like that. Well, this looks like that. This is what it looks like on the five minute chart. The pullbacks are all small. We're below the moving average all day and very difficult for bulls to make money. They can't make money with stops. They can't make money with limit orders, only sell. You can sell below a bear bar, closing below its midpoint or near its low. You can scalp, but the problem a lot of traders have is once they take their profit, they never sell again. And if you find that you keep getting trapped out of trends that last all day because you're scalping and you can't get back in, stop doing that. Trade very small so that you're not thinking about money and you sell and you hold. I sometimes make the comparison to Forrest Gump. Don't give it a lot of thought. I think you could argue that Forrest Gump would probably be a better trader than Albert Einstein. Don't think too much. You just take the trade, put the stop in, and if you want, go to Walmart and come back in a couple of hours. Most traders should be looking for trends, and most traders should be swing trading, and most traders should be entering with stops. When you have a trading range and it's very tight like this, it's possible to make money. You could take a few trades, but most traders are better off not trading at all and just waiting until the market starts to trend again. 
tomorrow, for example, or the next day. You'll have a better chance of making money if you swing trade. And if there's a trading range and it's very tight like this, reversing every few bars, there are not going to be many profitable swing trades. The tighter the range, the less you should trade. And most traders should not trade at all on a day like this because there's very little chance of making a swing profit. The reward is small compared to the risk. The probability is not high enough to overcome the bad risk reward. Unless, as I said, you're a limit order scalper who's willing to use wide stops and scale in. Most traders will not do that successfully, and most traders will not enjoy it. And therefore, you should look for days where you have trends and where you can swing trade and where you can enter with stops. This is the kind of day you're looking for. If you don't know how to enter, and it's going up without you, look for any bull bar closing near its high and buy with a stop one tick above the high of the bar and put a stop maybe below that bar and just hold until it's no longer a trend. No one likes to buy at the high. Everybody wants smaller risk. But when the market's in a trend, that's what you have to do. All you have to do is do it one time. Take any one of these buys and then put a stop down here and just hold. If you find yourself being tempted to exit all the time, as I said, go to Walmart, put a stop in and go to Walmart and come back in a couple of hours. Opposites true in a bear trend, only look to sell. The more the market is trending, the more important it is that you should be trading and only trade in the direction of the trend. Strong trends never look like they're going to last, but they can last all day. So get short, put in an appropriate stop above a prior high. If you sell anywhere in here, your stop is up there. Once you get a new low, you put a stop up here and you just keep doing that all day. Six consecutive bear bars closing on or near their lows, a very strong breakout. And it's a warning that it could be a spike and a spike in channel trend. So a spike down and then a channel, a series of lower highs and lower lows. And you sell for any reason. You sell reversals down from the moving average. You sell strong bull bars closing near the moving average. You sell at the moving average with a limit order. And then you put a stop above the most recent high. A new low, put a stop up here. A new low, put a stop up here. I began by talking about how stop and limit orders are opposite bets. Scalping in a trading range, some traders love limit order scalping with wide stops and trading range trading. Most traders do not. Most traders are better off looking for trends. I talked about how beginners lose with limit orders, wide stops, and scaling in. There will occasionally be a big move that goes against you, and when you should be adding on, you tend to exit in a panic. I talked about scalping in a trend. If you do scalp in a trend and you cannot get back in, then you have to stop looking for scalps. You have to take a swing trade, use an appropriate stop, and then just hold. I'm Al Brooks. I hope that you found this helpful. And again, I want to thank Tom for giving me the opportunity to speak to you.